This is a lemon. Obviously. This is a Ponderosa lemon, though. And these things are pretty interesting. They are so much bigger than a regular lemon. It's like if you took like 10 of these and combined them into one fruit. This is a lot of citrus right here. And although these are called lemons, Ponderosa lemons, they are not the same species as your traditional lemon that you get at the supermarket. Lemons are, uh, I believe, a natural hybrid between the citron and the bitter orange. So if you combine those together, you get uh, a lemon. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but basically that's what happens. And the Ponderosa lemon, it is a citron, so it has one of the same parents, and a pomelo, which maybe has to do a little bit with why it's so big, because pomelos are really big. Before I cut this open, though, I want to give a shout out to Tyler and Melissa from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I love trying different citrus hybrids. There's so many of them, so it's cool to try another one. So guys, uh, thank you very much. Wow, the smell on this is amazing. It's like so much stronger than a, uh, a regular lemon. It smells a little bit more like a citron, which uh, if you're wondering what a citron smells like, I mean, it smells like a lemon, but more like a lemon candy, I guess. And there's the inside. Here's a seed there. You can see it's about the size of a regular lemon seed. You can see that the, uh, the Ponderosa lemon has a very thick pith, which is a lot like the pomelo. Pomelos have a thick pith like that. Uh, citrons do too. I mean, citrons, sometimes you cut them open, they're like almost all pith, like 99.9% .9 pith. So you can see quite a difference there in uh, flesh to skin ratio. With the regular lemon, you can see there's like very fine pulp. Not much there at all, it just kind of turns to juice. But with the Ponderosa lemon, like, there's some, there's some chunks. <laughs> it's a little bit chunkier than the, uh, the regular lemon. The regular lemon has uh, a couple of seeds in it. There's, it's not seedless, but it's nearly seedless. The um, Ponderosa lemon, actually this side has a lot of them. You can see there's like a ton of seeds in this one. I know some people out there can take a bite out of a lemon, and to them that's a good time. Uh, I like sour fruits, but I'm not one of those people. <laughs> so uh, this is going to be a little bit painful, but I'm going to try them side by side. First, I'm going to start with the regular lemon. Whoa. It's a 10. <laughs> it's a 10 out of 10. Here's a fourth of the regular lemon. Here's a fourth of the Ponderosa lemon. It's funny. It's funny to me. It just kind of like looks like you took one of these and blew it up. So this is like a lemon for giants. Hmm. I'm going to take a little palate cleanser here. Okay. Mmm. This is different. As strong as lemons are, when you actually taste one, it is surprisingly mild in flavor. The sourness is really high, but the flavor is low. With this one, that flavor is higher. The sourness the sourness on this is about the same, give or take. It's maybe a little bit less, but I wouldn't go so far to say it's a nine. <laughs> it's like a nine and a half. It's almost a ten, but it is not quite as sour as this. But the flavor on this is nicer. It's not just sourness and that's all. There is more going on here. Yeah, if you want to recreate what this tastes like, take a glass of lemon juice, like good quality lemon juice, and a glass of pomelo juice, good quality pomelo juice, mix them together, take a sip of that. It's kind of what this is like. It's maybe edging more towards lemon than pomelo, but that pomelo taste is in there. What's nice about this is that because the sourness is about the same, if you were to use this for any kind of recipe that calls for a lemon, it would taste kind of like what it needs to taste like. It would have the right sort of sourness to it. However, it would have a little bit of a different flavor. 
because of that extra uh, pomelo kind of taste in it. But I'm not done. I want to take advantage of this pith here. There's so much pith there that uh, I think candying this would be a really good idea. But uh, first I want to just try it on its own. Oh, okay, there we go. Needed a little bit of help, but there. Okay, so you can see how much pith we're dealing with here. Got like, you know, like half an inch of pith there. So I'm gonna first just take a bite out of the, uh, the white part. There's a little bit of a bitterness there, but it's not that bad. Next I'll try a little piece with the actual outer rind. That part's bitter. That tastes like a regular lemon rind. Actually, maybe a little stronger than a lemon rind. Tastes better though. Regular lemon rinds have a bit of a medicinal taste to them. A little bit in the direction of like a lemon Ricola cough drop. The whiter bit on the inside. That however, is quite nice. Okay, so I just have uh, half of the Ponderosa lemon. I think that is plenty. <laughs> and I'm going to cut these into little strips like this. That is plenty. There's no need for me to do the whole thing. There is no way I'll be able to eat all of that. But, uh, you know, do what you need to do. While you're doing this, you would also put us some other rinds in here. Put some orange rind or uh, other regular lemon or lime rind. Just one thing to keep in mind is that not all citruses have a sweet pith. So a lot of the recipes actually calling for regular lemons will have you do this, but then scrape out as much white as you possibly can. You actually can take a, like a spoon and scrape out the inside, that way you don't get as much bitterness. But on here, this part's sweet, so you actually want to keep that on there. I've just submerged them in water, and that's going to go on the heat. We're boiling. I'm going to let this boil for about 30 seconds, and then change out the water. So I drained the peels and I added fresh water to this and now it's going to go back on the heat and I'm going to bring it to a boil again and basically you're going to repeat this process boiling it and draining out the water until these peels in here are not bitter anymore so with a lemon usually it takes like three or four boils with an orange it's probably just like one or two uh, grapefruits can take more, like five or six. With this one, I don't know. Like right now, I just took a little nibble of it. It's still pretty bitter. So I'm going to guess that this is going to take at least three boilings before it's going to be uh, ready to go. But you also don't want to overboil it. You want it to be a little bit bitter, because if you overboil it, then it just won't have any flavor at all. <laughs> so uh, you kind of have to find the right balance. So we're going to go with three, and then I'll give it a try. a little bit bitter but much less well maybe like half as bitter as it was before and I'm going to keep a little bit of the bitterness there I could probably go like one more time but then it would be at the risk of losing some of the lemony flavor so we're gonna keep it with this I'm gonna separate all of these out of the liquid and okay one cup of water two cups of water two cups of sugar. It's come to a boil, so in go the rinds. So I'm going to keep it on a simmer for one hour. Okay, so it's been in here for about an hour. It's kind of like glassy looking. That means that these are good to go. So I have over here a little plate with some sugar on it. And I also have this, uh, this pizza pan. It's a little rusty looking, but uh, what can you do? By the way, I'm at an Airbnb right now. So don't criticize how dull my knives are. It's not mine. I'm going to strain this syrup 
into here. This syrup, by the way, is good stuff. So don't throw it away. You mix it with water or seltzer or, you know, whatever. And it, uh, it's gonna taste good. If you're the sort of person who likes to put lemon and sugar in your tea, or uh, iced tea, it is a simple syrup, so it would blend well in iced tea too, uh, this, this works really well. It goes especially well with the bergamot, I think, in the, uh, in the Earl Grey. Candy goes into the sugar, roll it around a little bit, and then lay it out, well, shake it off a bit, and lay it out on the, uh, surface here. So I'm going to do that with all of these. I do like a few at a time I guess. You just don't want to go too crazy because then it'll clump up the sugar. Alright, let's give it a shot. It's good. I think um, eating these on their own it's not my favorite thing in the world, but they are good. It reminds me a little bit of like, God, what are those little gummy gems that used to exist in the 90s. Is that, is that useful to anybody? I would love to take some of this and like put it on top of like some ice cream or like pie, cheesecake, something like that, cake. This would be a really good garnish. And it also is pretty chock full of flavor. The, the bitterness that was there is, all but gone. There's like a little hint of it there. It uh, mostly is sweetness and strong lemon flavor. It doesn't really taste greatly different than a regular lemon rind candy. I guess maybe a little bit edging towards grapefruit candy, but grapefruit and, and lemon, like the, like the flesh, but a little more lemon than, than grapefruit for sure. So uh, yeah, that is, uh, that's really tasty. Again, thank you so much to Tyler and Melissa for sending this to me, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye. I would like to give a shout out to Smarter Every Day, AltPod, and the Harbor League Tea Company. They are mega patrons over on Patreon.com. If you haven't heard of it, Patreon.com is it's how this channel happens. It's how I can afford to keep this YouTube channel going. So if you haven't checked it out, please take a moment to go into the description below and click the link there. Uh, I also have t-shirts for sale over at my web store. A link to that is in the description as well. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye.